Okay, so uh, great questions. Who is the Course in Miracles is intended for? And uh, if the Course says uh, my only function is the one God gave me or my only function is to forgive, uh, and then it's also to be happy, then uh, what if um, you don't, you feel you've got to a stage where you've forgiven everything or, or and what is happiness? Along, the, along those lines, that's probably not the exact question, but along those lines. Okay, so who's the course intended for? Well, I'll give you my view today on that. The course is intended uh, for those who feel spiritually drawn to it. That's quite a nebulous answer. But if there is um, um, a calling to do the course, the, uh, or to read the course, or to do the lessons, then the, you know it's intended for you. I would say, just with the, like any spiritual program, you know, I would say it's often the spirit, that aspect um, of consciousness that wants to be free of limitation, that would bring you know the book somehow into your awareness. Someone might give you the book, or you might see the book in a bookshop, you might hear someone talking about the course and there would be an inner prompting to do it. Of course, there may be another you know, loud voice saying it's a waste of time and then go watch the football. But, uh, you know, but the course is intended for those who seem to be spiritually drawn to it as it's a spiritual course. Um, now, the course is 365 lessons. The last lesson is like um, more or less, uh, if you no longer need the course, you can throw the book away. So uh, there's 365 lessons. I think a lot of the lessons, uh, well, the, all the lessons and all the material is what I call holographic. You can do the lessons every day and it will still serve, just like with the 12 steps, you know, it's like, oh, I've, oh, I've finished step 12. Uh, well, I've finished the 12 steps, so don't need to do that ever again because I've arrived. That may be true. We may have arrived and not need the 12 steps ever again, or uh, may not. I would say if you're probably like at the level of Buddha and fully transcended the ego, and there is a, now a, a capacity, I'd say an enlightened teacher is no longer more or less temptable by the world. So they're not likely because of their, uh, because of enlightenment, you know, death of the ego, total transcendence of the ego to such a high level that even when temptations, thoughts, things arise in the world, they can't fall back into low levels of consciousness. So I'd say someone like that, who can't go back down again into those lower levels, um, doesn't need the course or any other spiritual practice. You know, they become more like spiritual teachers or instruments uh, because they're firmly planted in the infinite. Um, and if one is, you know, at the level of Buddha and isn't, you know, can't go down in consciousness, then one wouldn't need to do any more spiritual work. Um, it's not like temporarily arriving and then you're susceptible by the world to get hooked back in. And so you need that re, uh, you know, to continue to do the spiritual work on a daily basis so that you don't drop down again into resentments, fears, into unforgiveness. So. So uh, otherwise, then something like the Course in Miracles. Course in Miracles. What's the difference? But say, for example, I mean, there's so many different spiritual or supposedly spiritual pathways out there. I would say the Twelve Steps of Course in Miracles are authentic spiritual avenues. Um, so uh, I mean, the the Twelve Steps for me is primarily to overcome addiction and get a spiritual um, spiritual grounding. Course in Miracles is more like to dissolve the ego to a very very high level to get to those infinite places on a consistent basis, the infinite times now on a consistent basis where there's infinite flow and there's no sort of ego in the past or the future sort of trying to control, control things. One is just more like an empty vessel of the infinite. So if one can sustain that without falling down, then I'd say you, you don't need the Course in Miracles anymore. It's that pitched at that level. Who is it uh, aimed for? I mean, anyone who's attracted to it that may be your destiny to be, because um, that's the pathway to be in the infinite now, to be in the infinite presence, 
not to be in the future or the past or in, in your head and not letting the head run the show. If, if, if you're, if you, if you, even if you're there for a second, like, oh, I'm in the infinite timeless now, but like two minutes later, um, you're back in your head full of resentments and grievances uh, and angry, then I wouldn't say that the course is completely redundant and that you never need to look at it again. I would agree some of the lessons are archaic or boring or, or, or seem not to make sense. But I could say you could say that with anything, even if a certain step may feel irrelevant. Like I haven't got any resentments today, I don't need to do a step 10 in the 12 step program. Or um, there's nothing, you know, I don't have any, anything to forgive right now because um, there isn't any, what, any th person or anything that I need to forgive. I think, you know, the course is at a very high vibration. Uh, some of the lessons I agree are a bit boring, but it is um, by being in the middle of the bed of the course uh, with lessons or whatever, or groups, then uh, it has an energy that sustains one at that, uh, for, and you become a student to reach that level of consciousness that the course is aiming for you. Just like in a 12 step program, which for me is a lower vibration, if you consistently do that, you should be able to maintain a certain level of spiritual vibration and freedom from addiction. Some people may not need the Course in Miracles, absolutely, you know, or the 12 steps over again, uh, as they get to such a high level of consciousness, which is more or less um, unfallable, untemptable. Uh, so then, of course, you don't need that. Um, so, uh, so, but you know, the course, if, it, if it's resonating with you, then do it. Uh, if it's not resonating with you, just check, is it your um, ego that wants to leave it or is it your spirit or your heart saying it's no longer required? It could be something else, a different material that's required, or you may come back to it. In terms of a lesson like, you know, my only job is to forgive. For myself, I haven't done it, I don't, I'm guessing for, yes, well over a decade, maybe 15, 15, over 15 years, every year, the lessons, I do it as a kind of you know, like brushing the teeth. Uh, and I also want to be in the eternal now consistently. So for me, it's not like if I'm there for one second, I, can uh, I would throw the book away because I know that I could get hooked in to a person or a situation. And so that uh, the purpose of doing it on a regular basis and, and having a regular practice is that it makes that infinite timeless now uh, stronger and stronger and more and more firm and it's always life is if there are still things in the world people places and situations that can still hook you out uh, because you're doing it on a daily basis you start to transcend those hooks so that there's less and less things in the world that can hook you out so until that place is you know you're sort of unhookable you're, you're enlightened then i would say the course of course wouldn't be relevant you could throw the book away or you may decide that a different course is for you. I'd say every spiritual discipline has a different vibration. Happiness, well, happiness, you know, if the ego is not in think, if you're not in thinking and you've released every, every resentment, every grievance, every aspect of control, uh, every craving within the ego, uh, then, you know, you are by definition happy and there is nothing to forgive in that infinite, timeless, limitless space in every moment. So, of course, um, that's not required. If you're in a place where it's, it, you're just falling back easily into forgiveness or hooks into the world, then it may be useful to continue that or any other spiritual discipline. Okay, so um, I, oh yes, when I do that, if I have a forgiveness thing I, and I feel there's nothing to forgive, I, I'll just substitute it with a word, you know, allowing or, or beingness or whatever. But I get the gist of, of the course, even if there's nothing to forgive, there's no resentment or grievance. Just uh, saying my only function is to forgive is kind of a protective shield, even though there's no resentments. Just having the intention to say my only function is to forgive does create that deeper uh, awareness uh, to not pick up anything. So it does still serve some form of benefit or can be substituted for a word that seems to elevate you into a higher level of consciousness. Okay, so I'm gonna stop.